welcome everybody. This is so lovely. <laughs> I love, I, we kind of have like two, sh two shade groups. Um, so welcome to Grace this morning, whether you're here in this lovely sunny day or watching us online, we're so grateful that you're here. Um, uh, just a couple announcements. We have some um, birthdays that we're celebrating. So Pastor Kelsey um, and Gary Naderveld have great birthdays today. Should we sing happy birthday real quick? Oh, at the end. I did not receive the info. Well, we'll save, save all your, um, your birthday excitement. Um, and I know Stephen has an announcement as well. Just a reminder, this Saturday, we're going to try to do uh, volunteer Grace Grounds Day. Do some cleanup of the grounds, pull some weeds, plant some plants, trim some trees. So uh, plan on Saturday morning, probably 10 o'clock to noon. We'll do some work around the grounds. And uh, before that, Wednesday is Grace Gigs with Nathan Walton, who's a really excellent local musician. So don't miss Grace Gigs. All right, if you'll rise in body or in spirit, we'll begin with our call to worship. Come, let us sing to God. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to God with psalms. For God is a great God and a great ruler above all gods. In God's hands are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are theirs also. The sea is theirs, for God made it, and their hands have molded the dry land. Let us bow down, bend the knee, and kneel before God our Maker. For that is who our God is. We are the people of their pasture and the sheep of their hand. Oh, that today you would listen to God's voice. And let's start the service today by singing, Come, now is the time to worship. Sing with us. Come, now is the time to worship. Oh, come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Oh, come, just as as you are before your God, come. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Come, now is the time to worship. Oh, come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Oh, come, just as you are. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. One day, one, one day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Oh, come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to 
worship, oh come, just as you are before your God, oh come, oh come, oh so separated so it feels a little bit weird um, who to look at um, but the good news is our God sees us all our God welcomes us all it's a beautiful Sunday morning to gather for worship um, out in God's creation to see the leaves that are starting to change colors to feel the warmth of the Sun on this September morning and so as we gather here for worship whether here at the park or in your home or wherever you may find yourself this Sunday morning know that God welcomes and greets you and hear God's greeting for you today. May God's grace, peace, and love from God our Father, Christ our Savior, and the Holy Spirit be with you this morning. Amen. As God welcomes and greets us, let's take a time to give the peace and love of Christ to one another this morning. We are looking forward to our wonderful picnic time of fellowship after worship today. For now, we're going to come back together and sing How Great Is Our God. Let's sing together. The splendor of the King You are 
are worthy. You are worthy of all praise. And my heart will, and my heart will sing how great is our God. Let's sing that again. Name above. Name above all names. You are worthy of, you are worthy of all praise. And my heart, and my heart will sing how great is our God. How great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. call to confession. Lord, we come to confess that our sin runs deep and we are in desperate need of your grace. Join us as we sing together this confession and hear God's assurance that God is our righteousness. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. And without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my my song to rise to you when temptation comes my way and when I cannot stand I'll fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay and when I cannot stand I'll fall on you
children's worship, which happens upstairs during the school year. And our focus for Parks and Prayer this summer was the Lord's Prayer. And we used this book. I brought it along in case any of you want to find me after church. Hey, Mark, come on up on the steps. And we um, used this Lord's Prayer book. If you want to check it out, you can find me after the church service, and you can. But each page has a line from the Lord's Prayer. And then a little bit of a catechism about what that line of the prayer means. So that was our focus this summer. And so now the kids are going to lead us in saying the Lord's Prayer. And we would ask that you too also say the Lord's Prayer aloud. We'll do it all together, but the kids will be leading us from here in the front. And you may re remember what we learned in Parks and Prayer. You may read the sheet. But we are so grateful that you can lead us in this part of the worship service. So let's bow our heads and pray. Okay, we'll have sta kids stand up, please. All right, let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, kids. Littler kids who normally go to Parks and Prayer, you may go sit down with your families. But the bigger kids, we're going to ask you to stay up here. And Pastor Kelsey is going to talk to you for a couple minutes. <laughs> So the big kids here have spent years going to children's worship and worshiping upstairs. They have their own worship time, their own prayer, their own scripture lesson. And that's really fun, and it's really important that they get to do that. But there is a time that we get to celebrate, and that's when you no longer go. Some of you already do not go to children's worship, but you get to stay in the big worship with all of the grown-ups. Mm -hmm. And that is something that benefits not only their spiritual development, but I think all of our <coughs> spiritual development. <coughs> we are a body of Christ that has people from the youngest who are months old to those who are 80 years old today, there like Gary Naderbells. And so we just span the gambit mm. of ages. And that is a blessing <laughs> that we get to worship in that space. And so today we celebrate those who are graduating from children's worship and now we'll be staying in the main worship on Sundays. And in honor of that graduation, we are going to present to you with two books. One is a devotional book and one is a Bible. And so we are so excited to see your faith continue to grow and develop. And we're so excited that we get to walk alongside of you as you learn more about God.
I usually write my first letter, so I didn't. [laughs] I wrote a little bit. I wrote a little. [laughs] So yours is a little bit more perfect. [laughs] [laughs] [noise] Okay. We're gonna sing a song that we used to sing a lot when the kids would go off to to worship. [noise] First though, let's just give another hand clap for praise. For this momentous occasion. And let's sing together "He Knows My Name." [noise] 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 I have a maker. [noise] [noise] I have a maker. He formed my heart before even time began. My life was in his hands. He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls. And hears me when I call. I have a father. He calls me his own. He'll never leave me. No matter where I go. [noise] [noise] He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls. And hears me when I call. He knows my name. He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls. And hears me when I call. And hears me when I call. And hears me when I call. We now have the privilege of going to God for a time of prayer. Before we go to the prayer, a few housekeeping announcements. One, you may notice my shirt is a Mission 133 shirt. This is the middle school youth group shirt from this last summer's middle school youth group week. Fall ministry is kicking off. We have our Sunday ministries that we do for kids. We also have fall ministry that takes place as well. And in your bulletin today, there's a sheet that had the opportunities available for kids and adults at Grace. So keep your eye out for that and for more information that will come. Another one is that today we will not be taking offering here at Johnson Park. But if you would like to give offerings, you can do so online at gracegr.org. Or you can use the Grace Venmo. That information is in the bulletin for what that name is. Another announcement is Alvin Cole, who is a friend of Grace Church. He was in a very bad accident this last week. He was hit by a car and is in critical condition in the ICU. And so we're going to pray for him now, but just keep him in your prayers in this coming week as well. Let's go to God in prayer. Our good God, we come and we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks that we have the ability to gather and worship you in public at a park. We give you thanks that we have the ability to come together as a body of Christ 
that we have the technology so that we're able to be away from our building God, but still connected to others via the internet. God, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you that yesterday we were able to celebrate the life of Brenda Arnett as we celebrated her homegoing to you, God. But God, we pray for her children as that grief is going to stay with them for years to come. God, we ask that you be especially with the Nia, with Javion, and with Bree as they navigate losing their mom, God. We ask that there will be a support system surrounding them in this time. God, we pray for Alvin. We ask that you be with him as well as he's in the hospital. We ask that you give his doctors wisdom for the best way to care for him at this time. God, we pray for his brain as there's bleeding on the brain and bleeding on the spine and so many injuries, God, that as his body slowly works to repair itself, repair itself, God, that we know that you are the one that stitched him together from the very beginning. And so we ask, God, that you continue to heal him and to help him to not be in any pain and give him peace. God, we pray for the Lenko family as Rachel is expecting, uh, they're expecting another child soon. We ask that that will be a healthy pregnancy. Keep them in your sights, God. God, we pray for Rich, who is seeking new housing as well. We ask that you'll provide him with a safe and affordable place to stay. God, each week on Tuesday at Food Pantry, we ask the people who are neighbors who attend for prayer requests. In the last few weeks, housing has been such a big need. God, we ask that for all those people who are seeking housing, that you will provide safe, affordable, and stable housing. We thank you for all the organizations within Grand Rapids that help to provide housing and the good work that they do. But God, the need is so, so great. And so God, we ask that you will provide for where this need is. God, we think as well, we think of our greater world around us. God, we think of immigrant communities here and throughout our country who have seen an increase in hate and who are fearful for what will happen to them when they simply live their lives. God, we lament that people are so judgmental of those who are different from them. We ask that we as your children can be a beacon of light. God, we think of you yourself when you were a young child, how you fled to Egypt for safety, how you yourself were a refugee. God, help, help us to welcome those who are strangers and in need. Help us to love your children as you love us. God, the needs around our world are so great. We think of those in the Congo and Sudan. We think of those in Venezuela, in Palestine, in Israel, in Ukraine, in Yemen, and so many more places, God. Peace is something for so many that seems like a reality that will never exist in their lifetime. But God, you are our God of peace. And so we pray that you will come quickly and restore your peace here on this earth. We pray this all in your heavenly name. Amen. Amen. Pray with me. Gracious God, as we open your word today, may your spirit shine a light on its truths, guiding our hearts to understand your will and your plan for our lives. Open your minds to receive your wisdom and our hearts to trust your providence, now and always. Amen. Our scripture today is from Genesis 25, 19 through 34. These are the descendants of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel, the Aramean, of Padan Aram, sister of Laban, the Aramean. Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord granted his prayer, and his wife Rebekah conceived. The children struggled within her, and she said, If it is to be this way, why do I live? So she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples born of you shall be divided, and one shall be stronger than the other, the elder shall serve the younger. When her time to give birth was at hand, there were twins in her womb. The first came out red, all his body like a hairy mantle, so they named him Esau. Afterward, his brother came out with his hand gripping Esau's heel, so they named him Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. When the boys grew up, Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field. 
while Jacob was a quiet man living in tents. Isaac loved Esau because he was fond of game, but Rebecca loved Jacob. Once, when Jacob was cooking a stew, Esau came in from the field, and he was famished. Esau said to Jacob, Let me eat some of that red stuff, for I am famished. Therefore, he was called Edom. Jacob said, First, sell me your birthright. Esau said, I am about to die. Of what use is a birthright to me? Jacob said, Swear to me first. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank and rose and went on his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. This is the word of the Lord. The sun is moving, so if you feel the need to move your chair to a shadier spot, it's okay. Move as needed. It's also very sunny up here. Props to the praise team. They're in like direct sunlight. We pick up our scripture text today and we get to dive in. Can you hear me well? It's hard to, okay, thank you. Um, we dive in to looking at Abram's son. And we didn't read this part in our worship, um, in our sermon series that we did so far. But before Abraham passed away, he had commanded one of his servants to go back to where he came from, to go to his hometown, and to find a wife there from his family for Isaac. And the servant went, and the servant found Rebekah. And they got married when Isaac was 40 years old. But the text doesn't tell us till the very end. It says, oh, they got married when he was 40 years old. She was barren, and then she was pregnant. Oftentimes, it seems like things are happening so quickly. But we realized towards the end of our text, this was, preg they got married at 40. They didn't have the twins until Isaac was 60 years old. So like his father and like his mother, Isaac and Rebecca experienced a long period of infertility. They would have had the same struggle, the same sadness and fears of what is God doing? God had given Abraham a promise that was going to pass down through Isaac, so that implies that Isaac will have children, and yet none are born. And it's unclear when Isaac prays. The text tells Isaac prays to God, and Rebekah has a child. Perhaps Isaac didn't pray until 20 years later, and he's like, oh, I forgot to ask God to step in and help. Or perhaps Isaac had been praying the whole time, and God said, wait. Wait for my timing. But when, God, when Isaac prays, Rebecca has a pregnancy. But in her pregnancy, and it was funny, we were talking a little bit today about hunger that people were experiencing in pregnancy. Rebecca doesn't just have hunger. She has immense pain to the point where the way that she words it is like, what is happening to me? I feel like I'm dying. This is what she has prayed for for so long, to be pregnant. And now she is, and it's like a battle every day. And so Rebecca asks God, God, what are you doing? What is happening with me? And God answers. And we don't always like God's answer because I'm pretty sure Rebecca probably was not happy with this answer. But God gives her the knowledge of what is going on, a prophecy of what is to come, that the two children inside of you are going to be two nations and they are already at war with each other inside your womb. Great. So she goes through the pregnancy, and then the two babies are born, and Esau comes out first. And the names that they give these children are very literal. Esau means red, and it means, like, firstborn. And he comes out, and he's hairy. Esau means hairy, I'm sorry. And he comes out, and soon after, very soon after, comes out his younger brother, who is clutching onto his heel, Jacob. And they name him Jacob, which means clutching onto the heel, grab the heel. And these two boys are very different. They are twins, but they don't have much in common, it seems. Esau, someone who it seems like would love today, he would love to be outside, being in nature. He liked to hunt. He was good at hunting. He was maybe whether loud is kind of what the text says, like, 
boisterous. They talk about him being red, and that could refer to his hair, could refer to his skin color, unclear if he just had like a red tint to his skin. But sadly, being a redhead, that connotation was not a positive one that he would have had. It would have made people look down on him a little bit, like, eh. Not great. And his brother, on the other hand, is softer. Jacob's quieter. He's more of a homebody. He'd rather stay inside. On a day like today, he might be in the kitchen helping and say, I don't really want to be by all the people. Our text says that Jacob was blameless. But that does not mean he was like sinless or without sin. It most likely just means that he was soft-spoken. That he was someone that you wouldn't really pay much mind to because they weren't drawing attention to themselves. So these two brothers are very different. And their parents each decide, like, and it probably wasn't an intentional choice that they made, but they each then had a favorite. Isaac loved Esau. Partly because Isaac loved food, and Esau would hunt and bring back the meat for the food. And so Esau became Isaac's favorite. And Rebekah loved Jacob. And these are just facts of our text. It's not good that they had a favorite child. It is just the fact of their life. Reading through the book of Genesis, and as we dive in through scripture, oftentimes we look at scripture and we say, is this what God is calling me to do? Is this the example of a perfect family that we are called to be? It's very clear as you dive into scripture, there is not a perfect family that we are asked to emulate. And this is not a family that we are asked to emulate. We do not need to be like Jacob and Esau and Rebekah and Isaac. But they are a family like us. They are a family like us because they have struggles. And they're not perfect. So the boys grow up. And it's one day when... Esau is out hunting, and he comes back, and it seems like he did not have a great day because he comes back and he's starving. So his brother is there with some food, and he goes, oh, that sounds so good. Hey, I am starving. Will you give me some? And Jacob, Jacob, who's grabbing onto his brother's ankle, who is looking for the opportunity to get one over on Esau, sees the perfect opportunity right here. Sure, I'll give you some stew if you give me your birthright. Now I want to point out that Esau was not most likely starving. I think most of us at one point have said, like, oh, I'm so starving, when we have not been. I'll never forget when COVID, when the kids first went back to school during COVID, I was still nannying that year, and the fifth graders because they were the oldest, had, it seemed like the harshest rules. And we're waiting in line to pick up the kids after school, and one parent goes, I was there today. They're going to be so hungry because they got a tiny amount of time to eat lunch, and they got one snack break all day. And I said, oh, yeah, Nancy, the first thing she's going to say is she's starving. And she walked out the building, and she goes, Kelsey, they didn't feed us today. I'm so hungry. We need to get home right now. She ate lunch and she had a snack. She was not starving. They had fed her that day, in fact. We like to exaggerate. I think in this case, Esau is exaggerating. He's hungry. There is food ready. He just wants it. And he's willing to give up something of value, no matter that cost. And so this is during the birthright. We don't really, like in our society, the birthright not really a thing. My sister likes to say, because she was the first, she is the favorite. And those will often sign her things from your FF, first in favorite. But her birthright does not mean she is the first. She means she's the first, that's it. Does not mean she's the favorite. But in this culture at this time, Esau being born first, even just by a few minutes, meant that he did get more. He was entitled to more of the inheritance. And with two kids, he'd probably get double what Jacob would get. 
you'd think in this culture as well that the blessing from God, the covenant blessing, would fall then through Esau. He's the firstborn. He is the one that culturally would think all of this would pass down to. But for some reason, Esau does not care. And we don't know why he doesn't care. He just doesn't. And he's willing to give it away. But Jacob, Jacob does care. Jacob wants that birthright blessing. He missed it most likely by minutes. He was holding his brother's ankle. It's not like he's two years, three years younger. If only he could have just pulled harder coming out, then it would have been his. And you're left thinking he's probably thought about this his whole life, waiting for the opportunity to see if he could get this birthright blessing. And here's the opportunity. Now again, neither one of them are in the right. This is not a story that we can read and say, we need to be like Esau, or we can be like Jacob. Just look for the opportunity. Just look for the opportunity to get what you want and then take it, whether it is by moral means or not. Or don't worry about status. Don't worry about it. It'll all be okay. God is not pointing either brother as one who is making an upright choice in this moment. But they are making choices. And that's why these stories of Genesis are so important for us to read and to know. Because I don't know about you, but my family life is not perfect. I am not perfect. We're messy. I have five siblings. We grew up together. We shared rooms. We shared clothes, sometimes willingly, sometimes unwillingly. There were things that we wanted that the other had at different times, and there was fighting. And that wasn't good, but that was the reality. The reality is that this family, this family that God called to, is just like our family in so many ways. And yet we see throughout this story that God's will is still going to be done. Jacob is going to do what Jacob does. Esau is going to do what Esau does. And God says, that's not going to stop my plans. My plan is still in place. We see that time and time again through the book of Genesis. People walk away from God. People follow their own moral compass that is not God's moral compass. People do what they want to do without asking God if this is what God wants them to do. We read it, we could think, they're going to mess it all up. They're going to mess up God's plan for salvation. But God says, no. You cannot mess up my plan for salvation because my plan will come through no matter what. I don't know about you, but that is good news for us today. I was talking to a student who just started college this year from my previous church. And we had talked a lot about what college she would pick. And she had built into her head that if I pick the wrong school, everything could go wrong. Like, what if God called me to go to this school and I don't hear God tell me that and I pick the wrong place? And now all of a sudden, I'm off at this other school and I do this other program and I can't go back. And now it's all messed up, and I didn't hear God, and I made the wrong choice, and it's now a mess. And we sat down and talked, we said, yeah, you'll be okay. You will go to this school or that school, and whatever school you end up with, God will use you where you are. God's plan for you will not end because you make a choice like this. In a college, there's not a right or wrong choice, but sometimes in our lives, we do make the wrong choice. Sometimes we are the Esau and the Jacob who are doing bad things intentionally. We're throwing away what God has gifted us and our blessing. We're looking for opportunities to get one over on someone just because we know we can. Because if we have something that they want, we're saying, huh, what can I do to get what I want out of this situation? And that's not a good thing for us to do. But the grace is when we make those mistakes, God shows up still in our life and calls us back to him. 
Next week, we'll look more at these brothers making same bad choices. As we continue to go through the book of Genesis, their story does not end with their bad choices. God does not leave them there in their sin. God keeps showing up. God keeps showing up for us time and time again. No matter what we do, God's not going to step aside and say, well, you made that choice, I'm done with you. God is never done with us. God will show up time and time again. And God's plans will not be stopped by our actions. We know the story. We know what God has promised. We've read the scripture. God says he will come one day and wipe all the sins that we have done clean if we ask for forgiveness. God says that he will restore all of creation to a new heaven and a new earth. All the pain and all the suffering that we see in this world will one day not be here because God has said that he will come and restore his kingdom. And there is not a single thing that we can do to stop that. There is not a single thing that we can do to stop God. The choice that we have is if we're going to join God or not. The choice that we have is if we say, well, God, you're going to do what you're going to do, but I don't want any part of that, so I'm just going to walk away and do what I want to do. Or if we tell God we're in. That we might get some of the details wrong sometimes, but we're in to be part of God's people. To respond when God calls to us. Yesterday we celebrated the funeral for Brenda. And it was like we talked about Abraham, an easy funeral to get for Abraham. He followed God, he answered the call. So similar for Brenda. As family and friends came up and shared stories of what Brenda meant to them, it was funny to hear, A, Brenda basically never slept. She was always giving people a phone call. Someone said their alarm clock went off at 3.30 every morning, and Brenda called them at 3.20 every morning. Someone else said that Brenda called them at 9 o'clock at night, so said, Brenda, go to sleep. But one thing that we all said that we all knew was that Brenda heard God's call in her life and answered yes. She answered yes when it was hard, when it didn't make sense, when she didn't understand what God was doing. She said yes to God. She said yes to God's plan in her life, she said yes to joining God in the mission of God, going out to save this world. That's the question that we all have to answer. Our life will not be perfect. There are times when we will be Esau and we will throw things away that we should hold on to. There are times when we will be Jacob and we'll be a little bit sneaky trying to get what we want, not caring that it hurts another. And God says that is not who you need to stay as. Your life may be messy and complicated, but I am God and I am here. And I am willing to work with you time and time again, calling after you time and time again. I'm longing for you to say yes. I'm longing for you to turn your life away from your desires into the desires of mine, of a God who loves you, of a God who is faithful. And this family knew about God's faithfulness. This is now the third child. There's their father, and now these twins who are born that are, are clear evidence that God is the one who is in control. We read in Genesis at the very beginning that God commands the people to be fruitful and multiply. The same command then goes to Noah, be fruitful and multiply. Then to Abraham and Sarah, it's clear, God says, I am the one who will multiply you. And God repeats that promise to Isaac and Rebekah, saying, I am the one who gave you these children. I am the one who is in control. God is in control of our life and our world. God cannot be stopped by the powers of man. God cannot be stopped by the choices that we make. But God does not look at the bad choices we make and say, it's okay. 
God sees the choices that we make and says, come to me and find the forgiveness that I have to offer. Come and join me as I redeem this world. Let us pray. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you that in our scriptures you don't show us families that are perfect, but you show us families that are in many ways like ours, that are messy and complicated. And so God, we ask that as we continue to dive into your word, we look for the grace that you have given to us that we see the way, God, that you are working for your glory and that there is nothing that anything can do to stop it. And God, we pray, we see the pain in this world, we see the suffering that your people, that we, God, that we cause to others. Help us to be more like you, to be people of love and peace. And come quickly, God, Come soon to establish your peace and justice here on earth. We pray in your holy name. Amen. With the spirit of joy and hope, let's sing in response together. In Christ alone, please rise in body or in spirit as we sing. In Christ alone my hope is found He is my light, my strength, my song His cornerstone is solid ground Firm through the fiercest drought and storm What heights of love, what depths of peace When fears are still right now because we get to enjoy a time of fellowship and a meal together but as we depart from this day we we go into our weeks we go into our life we go where to God calls us and leads us and we're faced with choices each and every day 
as you make those choices, no, don't feel the weighted pressure of, will this ruin God's plan? It will not. But know that God's grace is for us, and God is asking us to join him, to be his people, to be his body where we go, to love as Christ loves, to serve as Christ serves. And it's a big, weighty task that we are given. We're given it, we're not doing it alone. We look around and we see all these people joining God's mission with us, and God goes with us as well. And so hear God's blessing for you today. Take this with you into your day, your weeks, and your life. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine down upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord give you the light of his smile and his peace, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. This next song, well, you can say it. <laughs> We're going to close out this part of our time together today with My Friends May You Grow in Grace. And wherever you are, if you want to, on the chorus, grab your neighbor's hand as we raise our hands to sing. Please do so. Sing together. My friends, may you grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior. My friends, may you grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. here for a minute. We have a couple of big birthdays today. As you know, Pastor Kelsey, happy birthday to you. Also, Gary Naderveld is his birthday. He has a big one today that ends with a zero. I'll let you do the math on what that first number might be. It's a six. Okay. All right. We've cleared it up. Oh, wait. Pastor Kelsey, you have to come this way, please. <laughs> she loves the spotlight. <laughs> There may be a kick. I know that we're not supposed to eat dessert before lunch, but I think we can make an exception in this case. Let's do it. While, while they're lighting that, we're going to sing. We're going to sing to Kelsey and to Gary right now. Ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Kelsey and Gary. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday.
Enjoy your time together today.